you're part of one of those agencies that kind of is lighting, lighting FFL on fire. Um, so tell me a little bit about, about what you were doing before Family First Life and why this transition made sense to you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I got into sales when I was 17. I've never had a guaranteed paycheck on a Monday morning. Um, I've, I, once I realized you could bet on yourself and create your own income, I, I, I could never wrap my mind around having to work for someone else, having to clock in somewhere, let somebody else tell me what my time is worth. You know, that's crazy to me that somebody can be like, you know, today your time is worth 20 bucks an hour, you know, and, and no disrespect. We need people in all industries. Right. But some people, you know, I, I, I do a mindset call on Mondays and I say it every week to, to new agents coming in. You got a growth mindset or a fixed mindset, you know, and it's one or the other. You can have a growth mindset, but a fixed mindset, that's, that's, those are the people that are born and go, these are the traits I have. You know, this is as good as it gets for me, right? Um, I, I like to play musical instruments. I use that example too, right? You know, when you look at somebody comes into, to, you know, they see you play an instrument, they go, man, I wish I could do that. Man, you're so, you're so blessed. You're so lucky. No, I've worked my butt off learning how to play this instrument, right? It's growth mindset. You decide you want to do something, you go out and tackle it. So once I realized that, you know, early on, just coming into adulthood uh, you know, about 15 years ago, then once I realized that it, it, you know, that was, that was a game changer. Right. So I was in sales for about, you know, I was in door to door sales, actually. That, that was my roots, man. I was selling newspapers door to door. I know, man, it's crazy. I'll sell newspaper subscription. Try selling newspaper subscriptions in 2012. It's not fun. It's not fun. But, um, and then I transitioned from that into, into a few other, a few other industries. Um, and then I had a business with my buddy, Joe, Joe Basso. And we started that business during COVID and he, uh, he called me one day and was like, man, I just found this, this company, this opportunity. I'm like, man, I don't want to sell life insurance. That's not, that's not going to happen, bro. That's not for me. And he's like, well, look, I, that's cool, man. Let, let me buy you lunch. I'll at least tell you about it. And he's sly, bro. He got me. I'm like, oh dude, yeah. Buy me lunch anytime. So we met up here in Richmond. They were like, like five minutes from where I'm sitting right now. And we sat down and he just rolled it all out. And it was like, like most of us on this call, it was like an avalanche of information. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, hold on. You said $10,000 a week. You meant a month, right? He's like, no, no, there's people making $10,000 a week. Like I know a lot of them. It's, it's, it's money in the bank. Like it's happening. So I said, I'll, I'll do it part-time. So I bought aged final expense. I made the classic mistake of like, well, I'm not going all in on this thing. I'll buy the dollar fifty leads. So I bought a hundred uh, age final expense leads. Now I dialed them Monday, Tuesday. That was my plan. So um, I dialed them all day Monday, you know, 10, 12 hours on the phone. I booked three appointments, which I was pretty stoked about because I was brand new at this thing. And I'm like, Hey, I got three appointments on the books, man. I'm, I'm a rock star. And uh, went out and ran them. I closed one policy. First policy I wrote was Americo money showed up on bank account a few days later. And I was like, okay, so it's real the proof of concept was there. And so I, I did the same thing the next week. And, um, you know, same thing. I dialed, I dialed all day, but I bought better leads, right? I bought the three month old leads now. So now I was, I was going big time, uh, $3 leads instead of $1.50 off the CRM. Dialed all day. I booked seven appointments. I closed three of them that next day. And uh, $2,700. I still remember waking up like two days later. And I'm like in my bed still. I like stretch, you know, I get my phone, I open it up. And there's $2,700 in my bank account from me calling these people on Monday, showing up on Tuesday. And, and, and I literally taken their order. They're like, yeah, you know, we need coverage. Okay. Oh, well, that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm ca calling people. Hey, what's the app I use? It's, it's the America one. Okay. You know, I log in. Like I, I was getting literally getting talked through my first couple applications. Right. Cause I, I didn't plan on coming into this thing. I, I didn't do the, I, di I didn't go all in at first. Well, after that deposit hit, Joe calls me. He's like, dude, don't, that's not your money. Pour it back into the business, pour it, buy better leads because that's don't, don't spend it. And I was like, man, that's tough, bro. Like I worked hard. I dialed all day Monday. I ran leads on Tuesday and uh, I, I poured half of it back into leads. I got some instant leads now, got like 120 something instant leads, called them all day the next Monday, booked out my next two days with them. I mean, I was like a maniac on the phone. Right. And, uh, 
I still remember like the feeling of, I had this other business I was running. And I remember the feeling of like, man, I kind of like this. I kind of want to go all in, but I've got, I've poured so much time and money and energy into this other business that I was running with Joe. I told Joe, I said, all right, I'm at a crossroads here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause our other business for 10 days. I'm going to go all in with this business outside of Sunday, Sunday's church and family every time. That's just me. That's a personal thing. I don't come down on any agents for running appointments on Sundays, but outside of Sundays, I'm going all in on this thing. I'm going to book up as much of my schedule as I can for 10 days. If I can make $10,000 in 10 days, that's all the, that's all I'll need to see. I'll walk away from my other business because I know that even at its best, I can't make a thousand bucks a day, not anytime soon, not, not, not with our other business. And just full disclosure, I mean, it was a door-to-door, it was home security. That's what we were a dealer for ADT. And um, we, had, we had some reps who we brought over, eventually we brought over to FFL with us. But, um, but yeah, so that was, that was the deal. And uh, by day seven, it was like 11 o'clock at night. The dude, the dude, the last policy, he was 49, he turned 50 the next day. And he got declined by his first two, first two applications got declined. And I'm like, bro, we got to get this done tonight. And now in my mind, I'm thinking we got to get this done because if we get this done, I'm going to hit $10,000 in a week. That's where I was. It was, I had to get it, but, but it was also ironic. Cause I'm like, this dude's birthday is in an hour and I got to get him in at 49 years old. So we get him a better rate. So he was with me. He's on board. He's like, yeah, let's get it done. So uh, anyways, ended up being American amicable, got him an MM uh, application in, um, which did get approved, which was awesome. And um, that was it, man. And after that, all that to say, I know it's a lot of buildup. That's actually the quick version of, of what really went down during that, during that little transition period. But all that to say, I called Joe. We borderline like cried together on the phone. I called him. We're like laughing. You know, he did this. I remember he did this like high pitch, like laugh. Like it was like this joyous laugh he did. And he was like, man, I sounded like Mark Mead there for a second. Cause he did I was this, just like, thinking that as you said it. He, he, dude, he said, he did this laugh and he's like, man, I sounded like, oh, you got me so excited for you, bro. I sounded like Mark just now. Um, but dude, it was, it was a, a pretty special moment and that was all I needed to see. Um, after that, you know, after that, I was like, all right, I'm going to sell some life insurance. And then as you guys, most of you know, that only lasted about a month before I was like, hold, hold, hold up. What's all this agency stuff. And so I, I started talking to Joe about that and you know, that was back in, uh, I, I got, you know, a recruiter and I really dove into building an agency back in end of June. I came in full time into this in middle of May. Um, I went, I went into building an agency end of June and haven't looked back since, man. It's just been a roller coaster, a wonderful roller coaster. Time moves real, real quick at FFL. So you, you said a lot and, and I didn't want to <laughs> stop you because I, I, I kind of liked how you how you package it all together how you tell your story um because it really it really encompasses a lot of what it takes um as a new agent to get started but i, I want to go back and and dig in so first of all if you guys because we've changed the training system since since a lot of you have joined uh if you haven't haven't gone through the new training system i recommend that you take some time and go through that week two of training and jump on things like his growth mindset call uh, because it sounds amazing. And listening to him, I know he does a phenomenal job there. And then the overcoming objections, things like that, I think a lot of you would benefit from. But take me back to, you said, I did, I, I made the classic mistake and didn't go all in. I bought 150 leads, booked some appointments, $3 leads, booked some appointments, and then put it back into $11 leads. So break down the mindset of those lead types and what, you, what exactly you mean by being a maniac on the phone, because I think a lot of people, when they start out, kind of take this, how can I say it, PG, this half-assed approach to dialing the phones um, and then yeah. wonder why their results are lackluster. Yeah. I mean, part of it is coming from door to door, man. You know, you got nothing to lose. If The way I used to teach uh, train agents on, on porches, same thing, right? Sean Mike says it all the time. As long as it's legal, ethical, moral it's fine. Like it's, if it's above board, go, you know, whatever, you got nothing to lose. Right. So I, that's kind of was always my mindset. Like, you're not going to see these people again, if you're not going to close it, you know, at least die trying, you know? Um, so that's kind of how I, how I was on the phones from day one. It was like, look, what are they going to do? Cuss me out and hang up on me. Like, I don't have another hundred numbers to call after. Right. It's why you got to have enough leads, obviously. Right. You don't want to come into this thing with 20 leads and, and hope for the best. You got to have enough to where it's, it's just, 
it's it's no big deal when someone when someone blows you off you just move on to the next one some will some won't so what next right something i used to teach in door to door as well so um so that's the mindset on the phones is like you know it's crazy to me people get so worked up because it's like dude they're you got nothing to lose like they filled out a form i'm calling them just to let them know i'm the local agent i'm the local field underwriter that's been assigned to get them the information that they requested and so I'm going to come to their home and get them that information. Now, whatever they want to do with that information, when I talk to them on the phone, I'm really chill about it, right? Obviously, that changes once I tell all my, all my agents, when you cross the threshold of the home, it doesn't matter if it's a dollar lead or a $500 lead. When you cross the threshold of that home, it's fair game. It doesn't matter. It's the same, it's the same thing, right? So all I got to do is cross the threshold. That's all we have to do is walk through that door. That's it. And then it's fair game. So by any means... We just got to walk through the door. That's all we got to do. So when I go, hey, look, I just got to get you this information. Whatever you do with it, that's completely up to you. We'll make an educate. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Make sure you're not strapped to a hospital bed. We'll make an educated decision once we once we take about five, 10 minutes and sit down with each other. Okay, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I got a lot of people to see. Uh, I'm not going to take a lot of your time, but I'm just going to get you that information you asked for. Okay. And like, make it about them right? This is, this is the people business. This is about them. You put in this information, you clearly aren't at peace. You clearly don't have everything you want. So I'm going to come out there and make sure you at least have the information. We'll make an educated decision from there. And then of course, the educated decision, unless you're a moron, the educated decision is you need to get some coverage in place, right? Yeah. So I know that. I know that that's going to be what happens when I go out there. But in their mind, it's look, look, look. I'm the field, local field underwriter. I'm going to come out there. I'm just going to get you this information you asked for. We'll make an educated decision from there. Okay. And they're going, okay. You know, so um, the, the, to me, it's, it's, it's everything about this business. It's not easy, but it's simple, right? You hear that over and over again. Um, it's so insanely simple. And so many people where they fall short is, is up here, man. It's all in their head. A lot of it is just in their head, but yeah, man, get on the phone. Tell people you're bringing them the information they asked for. I only have their information because they asked me for it. So what was, what was your, um, your volume like on the phones with that, that first batch, the frequency versus um, once you, once you had proof of concept and, and kind of shifted gears uh, and, and bought 120, uh, $11 instantly. So how did, how did that change? Well, you know, to me, I didn't know any different. Like now that I've experienced, you know, mortgage protection and all these other things, these different vendors that I get to work with now, now that I've seen all that, my, my perspective on it has shifted, not in a bad way, just, you know, like anything, you kind of see it for more of what it is. But at the time, in my mind, I thought, okay, if I'm buying an $11 lead versus a $1.50 lead, it means it must be about 10 times better, um, which isn't always the case, obviously. But in my mind, I'm like, man, these are like, the creme de la creme leads like it gets no better like literally the, the best lead you can get on the crm now they've got these facebook leads but at the time the, the most expensive lead you're getting on the crm is 11 bucks so like this is it this is the cadillac of leads and so that helped a little bit because in my mind my mindset was like i don't know i guess in my mind they these people were so intentional they're sitting there by their phone waiting for my call so i get this information to them and, and that's uh, that's really what i believe and I, I know that played a big role in that week because when I showed up, you know, now, now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, you know, some, some, you know, I still had the people, obviously they're like, I didn't fill that out. Well, somebody yeah. did, you know, I have an agent. He says, uh, it's really cool, man. He, his line, whenever he gets that on our live dials, somebody goes, I didn't fill that out. He goes, oh man, well, you're really blessed. Somebody cares about you a lot because somebody, right. somebody filled this out. And I'm sure he picked that up from someone else, but, um, but it's all a mindset though. It's like, Oh, that's, you know, fantastic. Somebody, somebody, somebody cares about you. Somebody filled this out. I'm just going to get this information out to you guys. So I think for me, I just didn't know what I didn't know. You know, ignorance is bliss kind of thing. And, um, I, but you also didn't question. I didn't question the system at all. I'd seen, you know, that's what I love about FFL man. And Sean Mike goes out of his way to make it. It's all transparency. Everybody, people will show you their bank account. Like it's nothing here, man. And there's I, coming up in sales. Like nobody does that anywhere. You know, they flash the watches and the cars, but nobody goes, hey, look, dude, this is the system. This is what I did to get here. It's copy and paste, right? So if you take what somebody successful is doing and you look at it and then they show you their bank account, they go, this is how I got there. Why complicate it? Why not go, okay, I'm going to click copy. I'm going to click paste. I'm going to start doing what you're doing. 
And then the money that's in your bank account is going to show up in my bank account. That's it. No, it's simple. I mean, it amazes me how many people see that and they're like, but, but, but wait, but what if? I know, man. I have an agent. I have an agent. He's, he's probably at this point done um, because he came in and he goes, no, man, I, I really want to do the virtual thing. I go, hey, virtual's great, man, but you're in a great market. You got people all around. You need, you need to go meet people in person, you know, and, and, and get that experience under your belt. He's like, yeah. yeah, no, man, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I want to try the virtual thing. I mean, he, uh, I'm like, well, you got to buy more leads. You, you're coming in broke. You know, you got to, you're going to have to buy a lot more leads. You're going to have to, you know, the virtual, virtual is a great opportunity, but if you got people that are having massive success and they're not in good markets as nice as his, the market he's in, you got people having massive success and this is what they're doing. Like, why change it? Why try to do, why try to do your own thing? Why try to, you know, any, anybody that's come into FFL in the short time I've been here, right? Nine months, everybody I've seen come in and try to reinvent the wheel is in and out within a couple of weeks. And it's crazy because the money here is so good. The opportunity is so life-changing and all the answers are laid out. It's almost like people self-sabotage because it's so simple. It's like so simple that people can't even believe it. So they try to complicate it and they complicate themselves out of business. Yeah. You know, that's what it feels like. So obviously your, your mindset is, is, is a bit abnormal. Um, and I, 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 I kind of think that that's the answer to this question, but uh, you didn't schedule an appointment at 11 o'clock at night. Um, so how do you end up in somebody's house at 11, at 11 PM um, and have them still captive and open to sitting down with you to, to protect their family? Because a lot well, of people it, shy away from even eight o'clock, nine o'clock appointments, but here you are, I'm sure you were late. Um, I was, I, I got there at, I got there at nine. I got there at like nine o'clock or like nine Oh five. It was an eight 30 appointment. Um, during the summertime, I scheduled my last appointment for 8.30 because like, or during the, not even, you know, when I started, like when the, when the sun's going down at, you know, eight o'clock, it's not weird. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. Like 8.30 feels, obviously, especially for some older people, 8.30 feels a lot different now than 8.30 feels in July. Like that's not a secret. Um, so that's all that was, man. It was like an 8.30. I showed up at like 9.05 and then, you know, mortgage protection, got her taken care of, got the miss. It was a his and hers. So she got me to like, she got me to like 9,800 or something like that. So I knew that with the, with his policy, my submit was going to be a slam dunk. And then lo and behold, this guy who seems perfectly healthy, you know, he gets rejected from America and mutual of Omaha. And now, I'm, you know, I had to move on to AMAM. We always kind of joke about AMAM, you know, underwriting department is, you know, they're, they're drunk on the job or something because they let people in who nobody else does. But that's, that was the move, man. It just took me three applications and I ended up being there at like, like I said, man, it's crazy. Like his birthday, I'm, I'm assuming the system would have automatically kicked him to 50 years old once midnight hit. So yeah. we were like in the, we were literally in the 11th hour getting, uh, getting his policy in place as a 49 year old. Yeah. So take me back to, to your transition because you went from, it sounds like from somewhat of a, of a specialist in the, in the door to door um, alarm sales in the other business where you were training the people that you brought in to, I don't know anything about this and, and humbled yourself to plug into a system and, and take the coaching and not, not fight the system. So what was it? I don't, I don't even know how to, how to ask it because so many people fight it. It doesn't make sense to me, but what was it that allowed you to go from in comfortable calling from the house to say, okay, I know everything. Okay. I know nothing. I'm just going to call and and not get in my own way um you know man again I, I i hate to keep going back to it but the proof of concept was so real to me i i didn't i was skeptical about the industry life selling life insurance i wasn't skeptical about family first life you know it only takes a few videos um you only hear sean mike talk for about three seconds and you're like oh okay we're just, we're just like, this is just the real deal. These aren't people like blowing smoke. Like this is just, this is the real thing. Um, so I was a believer in the, I was a believer in the, in the company and the people that I knew that were making the money I wanted to be making. I knew they weren't smarter than me. Um, I knew they probably, they could outwork me. Right. If I chose, if I chose to let that happen. So what's so crazy. And now I just preach it every day to, to new agents is work ethic coachability. I mean, those are two of the biggest things. And then to me, the biggest thing is mindset. 
Like you talk about like, like, you know, I've been talking about uh, Steve G's number, even during like Thanksgiving week, when a lot of us were you know, taking time off with family, the dude, like he works hard. He follows a system that's laid out, very simple system that we all have laid out in front of same opportunity. But his mindset is he's an, he's an animal, man. He's an animal in his, in his, in his mind. He's going to write 25 plus a week. That's what he does. He doesn't miss because in his mind, like it's just, he's made that decision. And so I think that's a big part of it, man, is when you come in, whatever you decide you're going to do with this business, any business, but this business, especially because the, the support, the training, all the stuff we have access to, it literally is a decision. It's you and your mind deciding what you want it to be. Some people want it to be a $3,000 a week, you know, $3,000 of, of extra cash in their pocket. Sure. Great. They, they can go tackle that. Some people want to make it $25,000 a week like Steve G. And so that's what he goes and does. So it's, it's to me, man, it's just deciding. I think that's all I did was I, I made a decision when I came in. I was like, look, if I'm going to do this, even part-time in my mind, I was going to just do this part-time forever. And it only lasted two weeks, but in my mind coming in, I'm like, Hey, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to do it part-time. I'm going to do it right for Monday. I'm going to dial on Monday. I'm going to run appointments on Tuesday. And then I'm going to run my other business Wednesday through Saturday. That was the game plan. And, um, you know, once I saw those numbers, then I, I changed my, my mindset. I said, okay, I think I want to be a $10,000 a week producer now because that's kind of fun. And so, so it wasn't at all comfortable for you to call call from the house or you didn't get any pushback from, from the clients or feel like, feel like you didn't know enough or that you were doing them a disservice by calling for. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fake it till you make it kind of guy. And I don't mean to lie to people and make up information. I, I was very quick to say, you know what? That's a great question. Let me come. I think I know the answer, but let me call my senior underwriter. I had no clue. I call my senior underwriter and I'm like, you know, I'm calling Gabe Erickson, you know, I'm calling these guys. I'm like, dude, what, 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 what do I do with this situation? You know? Um, but, uh, I'm a big, like what I would do, and this might sound a little bit crazy, but this also might help somebody. So I'm going to say it. What I would do is like on my way to appointments, I would watch videos of, you know, interviews. I'm sure I've watched some with you, uh, Paul McLean and Andrew Taylor. And I'm listening to these guys, Matt Smith, and I'm listening to these guys talk. And what I would do is in my brain, before I'd walk in the house, I would become them. I'd go, okay, I don't know what they know but I can, I can go do what they're doing. I can go be them in this house. And, and anything I don't know, I know a lot of people who do know, right? So I can make a phone call and we can make that, we can, we can, we can take care of that, that's easy. All I gotta do is go in there and be them. So I was never nervous. I didn't go in there, I was like, hey, how's it going? So um, I'm here today to talk to you about your, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't sound like a trained puppet, right? Like I sounded like, like I'm listening to these guys talk about their in-home presentation. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go be them. And so that's, that's, that's what I did. And, and lack of knowledge is no problem because knowledge is everywhere. We got like, if, you know, there's, there's multiple people I see on this call right now who know way more than I do about this business. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm a simple guy. I keep it really simple. I walk into a home with a tablet and a binder. That's it. People go, you got brochures? Nope. That's, we have internet. I'll send them, I'll send them a link. You got business cards? Nope. I take a picture with every client. I send them my number. I say, what are you going to do with the business card? You're going to stick it in a door. You're going to lose it. I would rather you have my face. I want to be, I want to be where your friends and family are. I want to be in your contacts and your phone. That's where I want to be. I'm your agent for life. You're my client for life. Like this is, this is a partnership now. So that's just how I, man, that's just how I operate, man. I want, I keep it simple. I have agents asking me questions. I'm like, dude, I don't know. You're like, you don't know this. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, dude. Go Google it. Look it up. I don't know. I just had a guy ask me right before I got on the call or actually while I was on the call, while Ivan was reading his numbers, I just had an agent text me, uh, full transparency here. He says, what is cash value growth rate on a mutual of Omaha child policy? My answer was, I have no clue. I'm sure it's online somewhere. I don't know, man. I keep it real simple. Like, and if I need to know it, if I get in a situation like he's in now where I need to know with the client, then I'll make a phone call and I'll figure it out and that's, and I'll learn it. But people let that stuff keep them from being successful. They let lack of knowledge be like, I can't do it. I'm scared. I don't know anything. Well, then you're never going to, you're never going to be successful in this business because it's always evolving. There's always things, the things that have changed, even since I came in the door back in April, like it's crazy. So yeah. you have to be willing to just go activity above all else, activity over everything. Yeah. So, okay. So you told us a little bit about the mindset and, uh, and how you kind of approach approach your clients and the people that you sit down with take us take us inside the house at the table with you I know we had Matt Borsch on a couple weeks ago 
Um, he walked us through his in-home A to Z. I'm sure oh, that geez. You, you pulled from him. Um, yeah, but Matt, yeah, if you had Matt go through, if you had Matt go through his in-home, you, you've 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 heard it from about the best because that dude is thorough. He's good. Yeah, 100. percent So, what are some of the things that you do in the house that are unique to you that you think kind of sets you apart from anybody else that'll sit down with the people that you sit down with? Um, you know, I think a big, I think a big thing is is again once you cross the threshold, you know, it's game on, right? I think a big thing is expectation for the client and getting that knocked out in like the first five minutes. Yeah. I think when you sit, I think when you sit down with someone, um, they should know, <laughs> obviously when you're on the phone, you just want to get in the door, right? You're not trying to sell them a policy on the phone. Sean Mike says nothing good happens on the phone. I learned right. that the hard way coming in, right? You can't over, you got to be real quick and simple on the phone. But once you're in that home, you know, I don't want to waste my time. They, they, and this is a mindset thing and it sounds cocky and it's not, they need me more than I need them. I have other appointments. I have people to see. I'm not going to have commission breath. I'm not going to sit here and sound like I have to close this. I got to get this policy or else I'm struggling. I'm not going to come off that way. They need me. So when I sit with them, I try to trans, I try to translate that without saying it. I try to translate that thought process. So I go, Hey, this is something you guys need my job, you know, three things on the top of the financial inventory sheet affordable, comfortable, qualify, right? When mm -hmm. I circle all three, actually, I put a box around all three. I go comfortable. We're not going to put anything in place that you're not comfortable with, period. Okay. If, it, if it's, you're losing sleep over it, it's no good. It should be making you sleep better at night, whatever we decide on here. Okay. That's number one. Two, affordable. I am not going to put a policy in place that you can't afford, even if you want to. Some people, their heart is bigger than their wallet. I understand you want to take care of your family. It's important. So I'm, I'm literally like, I want them to have to sell me on the policy they want, right? They, I want them to tell me why they, why they need it and how, how they can afford it. So I'm going to go, uh, of, you know, on this box, I go affordable. Um, I get you. Everybody wants to give their family millions of dollars when they die. I get that. But not everybody can afford that. And if you can afford it today, great. What if you can't afford it in five years and you pass away in seven years? They get nothing. It could be a $50 million policy. They get nothing because it lapsed. So let's put something in place that we know is going to be there when, if, and when we need it. Okay. Uh, and then thirdly, this is my job. This is why I'm sitting here with you right now. Qualify. I don't, I, don't, I, would, I would give everybody a policy that I could. I mean, I, I love people, right? That's why I do what I do. So I would get you, that's why they don't let me do it because I would just let everybody, I'd, I'd approve everyone, right? Um, so if any of these three boxes, that's why I draw a box around it, right? If any of these three boxes aren't checked here in a few minutes, this isn't going to work. This, this relationship's not, this is, we're not going to move forward. It's not going to work. The only way this is going to work is if all three, not two out of three, all three of these boxes have to be checked. Okay. When they say yes or okay, that's me hearing like that, that's game over. That's you know, like, we, we just got ourselves a policy there. If they go, Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, well, I'm just looking at prices right now. I'm going to grab my stuff and be like, okay, I think you're looking for Google. I don't think you're looking for me because you can get prices. You can get prices a lot of places. Uh, I, I, that's not how I roll. When people have me come out to their home, it's because they're for real. They're ready to get something in place and they want to get the absolute best product available to them. Okay. So I think there's been some miscommunication and then all of a sudden, oh, well, well, hold on. Well, I mean, if the price is right. Oh, okay. So if all three boxes are checked. Gotcha. Okay. So sometimes, you know, Jordan, uh, Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street, um, he calls it looping. Sometimes you have to go through a looping pattern to get back on track. So we're going to loop and go, oh, okay. So it sounds like we're not on the same page. I don't think you're ready for me. When I sit down with folks, it's because they want to put something in place. They want to know what the best available product is. That's why I'm here right now. Oh, well, well, yeah. Okay. So now we're going back to our three boxes. So you're saying if we check all these boxes, you do want to move forward today. Put through a, we're going to put through an application. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. I just want to make that clear. And now when I go through that financial inventory, the expectation is like, if I check these three boxes, then we're moving forward. We're putting through an application. Um, if I don't check the three boxes, I didn't do my job right. Now, everybody on this call knows that we're checking those three boxes. Like I'm not leaving there until I find something comfortable, affordable, and I'm going to at least try to get them qualified, even if they're in the worst shape possible. I don't care. We're going to get them some AIG. We're going to get them something, right? So, um, that's, yeah, that's to me, I think one of my, I wouldn't even say a strength, anybody can do it. So I shouldn't, even, it's not even a strength, but I think something that's very helpful for me is 
I tell them that about those three boxes being checked because I want them to, to convince me why this policy is a good fit for them. I'll present the number, you know, well, I'll show them what the options are, but I want them to tell me how this is affordable, this makes sense, it's comfortable, and they really, please, sir, can you get me qualified for this? That's, that's the vibe I want going into that application. I don't want to feel like I'm going into the application and I'm like writing a potential chargeback. I want them to convince, I want them to feel like they, like, like they're so grateful that I'm there with access to this application because they want this policy so bad. That's great. And, and it's, you're right. It's not anything different, but the visual that comes along with actually drawing boxes around it, um, I think goes a long way in, in kind of helping push them because talking through it conceptually is one thing, but when they see you physically draw those boxes and say, obviously we need to check these three boxes or our goal is to check these three boxes, it, it creates a whole different sense of urgency and understanding and level of buy-in of, of what you're about to do. Yeah. Um, I, and, I, sorry, I was just going to say, as a brand new agent too, what it did, I, I did that on day one. My friend jo Joanne Basso. Um, she said it on our, on our call, our team call the other day, um, that, and Joanne and I, we, you know, we were friends before this business. Cause you know, we, we, Joe and I, you know, know, we have known each other for most of our lives. And, um, so we were friends coming into this business. We came in around the same time and she said something on our team call the other day that really resonated with me. We never talked about it, but she said, what I do today in homes is what I did my first week. And she's just never changed. She just got better. She just got better. Right. So when I started out, those three boxes, I never heard that on, I mean, I listened to a ton of podcasts once I got going, but the three box thing for me was like my staple. Like when I went into the home, when I went into every home, I knew no matter what the situation was, I was going to end up at the kitchen table and I was going to be saying those words about those three boxes every single time. Um, well, as soon as I get off this call, I'm headed to an appointment. I already know, like what I just went through with you guys, that's exactly how it's going to sound when I'm sitting with this couple at this next appointment, I'm going to make sure they know that we are not moving forward unless those, those three, and it, and it also like buys you time, get your thoughts together. You know, you're sitting there. I think everybody needs to have that moment. Cause especially as crazy as this business is, and you're growing an agency and you, you know, you have five phone conversations in the car, your head's not in the right place. When you come in and sit down, I feel like you got to have something that grounds you and gets you in the moment. And for me, that, you know, that is my setting the table. That's me getting in the moment. Um, and then when we find agreement on checking those boxes and we move forward, it's, it's a lot smoother of a ride than if you just walk in and just jump right into numbers or, you know, any, anything else. And I also don't like, I love like small talk and rapport building, but I feel like obviously and you hear a lot of different schools of thought on that in this business. I, I feel like having something like that to open with lets people know, again, even on day one, when I knew nothing, and I still don't know a lot, obviously, but it lets people know where your expectations, like where the expectations are. Um, and you're not going to waste a bunch of, like a lot of new agents get so frustrated. They'll spend an hour, two hours in a home. And then of course people go, well, this has been a lot of great information. You're so polite. You're so nice. It's been really nice getting to meet you. Um, you give me something to think about. Thank you. Ugh. It was like, just even saying that just now made me angry. Like, it's just like, nobody, nobody wants to have that feeling, especially after you just like did everything you thought was right. You pour your heart and soul into this, this person, this conversation for like an hour or two. And then that's what they come back with. No, let's get, let's get that out of the, if that's going to happen, let's let it happen in like three minutes from the time I walk in the home, not two hours later. So I think having that, that setting the table, having those expectations laid out cards on the table earlier, the better, man. That's, that's, I mean, and that's how I've always felt in sales, but in this business, especially, you got other people that need protecting. And if it's not the one you're sitting with, we got to bounce. We got to bounce and go find, you know, go find those people. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I love those three boxes. I'm definitely going to start using that um, just because of the visual and everything that you said behind it. Um, now, and this is my last question, and we'll get, we'll get into some of the, the people on the calls questions because you kind of filled us, filled us to the brim here. Um, you said it one month in you started you started seeing these agency numbers and like wait a minute what what's this agency stuff what was it that made that light bulb go off and then how did you make that transition into into hiring and obviously being as as intentional about your personal production as you are yeah um 
Well, it helps, it helps being shoulder to shoulder with someone like Joe Basso every day, you know, that, uh, that, that obviously played a big role. Um, when he and I started looking at his own personal, you know, numbers and quality life solutions and what they were doing or what we were doing, I guess, as a whole, I was like, so like, what, like how, how expensive is it? Like, what is it? What is it? Cause you know, I, I just was, I was so lost. And he's like, dude, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're literally, you're out selling. It's Mark Mead said it at my first conference I went to up in Jersey. He said, um, I'm going to butcher it probably, but he said, uh, the vehicle for this business is you know your expenses so your leads recruiter dial or whatever that's your you know that that's the vehicle and the gas is sales the more gas you pour into that vehicle like the faster it's going to go the quicker you get to integrity it's really simple and so joe was kind of telling me the same thing he's like dude it's it's you know you you, you literally like now that you've done it now that you've had ten thousand dollar weeks you just go teach other people how to do it you know and which i like doing like i'm really passionate about that i'm really into that so um, I guess once I, like one, once I looked at the numbers, I was like, you know, it's, it's the crazy thing about FFL is you come into a business, you know, you, you don't hear of many businesses where someone can say like, yeah, my overhead, I can't, I joined this company where I'm spending, you know, 15 grand a month. People are like, hold, hold on. You mean you're making 15 grand? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm making enough money to where my overhead it's 15 grand a month because I'm growing a business between leads and recruiter office, whatever. Like I'm spending between 15 and 20 grand a month. It blows people's minds. Like I have friends, you know, we're the same age in our early thirties and people are just like, I'm so confused. What do you mean you're spending? Well, because it's a business. I'm not just going into life insurance sales. It's a business. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. Everybody on this call, if you're on this call, you're a business owner. Like yeah. you're an entrepreneur. Now, whether or not you're meant to be one, you know, that's, that's, that's personal. That's a personal thing, but you are a business owner if you're on this call. And if you treat it that way, then, you know, you got a business, you got a growing business. And so I guess that for me was like, I don't want to just be a life insurance salesman. I want to, I want to be a business owner. And so that's, that's really what it was, was just, you know, treat, starting to treat this like a business instead of just a sales gig. And yeah, I mean, we're, and I'm still there, you know, six months into being an agency owner and I'm still cruising along trying to figure it all out you know like like a lot of other people are so that's great i wish i had more I, mean, to, I wish people... i had more to offer i wish i had more to offer man i told you i'm simple i'm i'm a i'm a basic i'm a basic dude man i don't have a whole i don't have a whole lot of bells and whistles i just i just do you know do what seems to to make the most sense for for me and for my family that makes sense that, that makes it easy to follow and easy for people to gravitate to and duplicate um so uh, i know we scheduled this call to till 1 30. Um, so we're going to open it up to, to questions and then let you get out. I know you said you had an appointment. No, it's all so. good, man. That's all good. I, I scheduled it out a little bit where I have time to, to wrap things up here. So, uh, any questions you have, you can post them or just unmute yourself and ask why you, uh, muster up the courage to ask Tyler a question. There's one that says as a new agent, who can we contact if we do have questions in home, if our main contact is busy? Um, when you went through, when you went through your onboarding, if, if you're with, I know if you're with anybody under that 320 umbrella, you should have uh, a plethora of numbers of people you can reach out to there. And if you went through, um, if you work with Ivan, myself or, or Jose, when you go through that Monday new agent induction, um, that, that outline that we have you download has all three of our numbers on there. And I know for a fact that Ivan urged you to save those numbers um, during that call. Um, so you should have, a, regardless of where you are, you should have a, a handful of people to reach out to uh, if your your direct manager isn't available when, when you find yourself in the house and need some guidance. But anybody else have any questions for Tyler specifically? I have a question, um, Tyler. Thank you so much. I, I like your, your simplicity. Um, being a new agent, when do you think it's a good time to transition from using like the uh, CRM leads to investing in some like BPLs or like using some lead vendors? As soon as you can afford it. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, um, yeah, I mean, as soon as you can afford to have a, be a better high intent lead. Um, and I would also say like, as soon as you're not going to butcher it too. I, I mean, I don't <laughs> yeah, think anybody, sense. I don't think. 
Yeah, I don't think anybody should come into this business. Like week one, every new agent I have come in, we do live dials every Monday, Thursday, every new agent that comes in. You know, I'm a big fan of the three, four month leads on the CRM for a new agent. Um, as someone who started off on aged final expense, I, uh, there's money to be made there for sure. But I think you can split the difference between that and a higher end lead and get people, you know, uh, more high intent people get some good quality phone conversations on the three month old leads. So I think you do a week of that, get your phone script out. If you're taking more than a week to get your phone scripts on and right, you're just not invested. You're just not putting the time in. That's all that means. You're not making the right amount of dials. I think after a week though, as soon as you can afford it, man, I think you, I think you gotta, you know, you gotta start, you gotta start looking for higher intent quality leads again. it's a business. The, the more inventory, the, the better inventory you buy, you know, the, the higher profit margin you're going to have like any other business. Thank you. Specifically. No, that's great. That's a great answer. Give that to myself. Oh, What's Tyler. That, the, inven the, in the inventory? Uh, just, just the way that I, a lot of people, some people are, are ready to be exposed to everything that goes on in my head. <laughs> Go ahead, Go ahead Justin. Justin. Hey, Tyler, I just wanted to say, I love how you, um, you take the photo with the client and, uh, you know, set it a contact to their phone. I do the same exact thing. And, you know, I think it helps with your, uh, persist persistency. So that's really cool. Uh, I just also wanted to say, I love how you set the expectation with the client, um, you know, with the, the, the three boxes. And what I love about that, and I'm actually going to try that, um, but you're giving them exactly what they want, you know. They want something comfortable, they want something affordable, and they want something they can actually qualify for. So I love how that you just set that up, that expectation. It's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, it's, um, it's like, it's funny because you're like telling them like, it's a bad thing. You know, you're presenting it in a way where like, again, you want them to, like, they're like, I don't understand. This is all good stuff. You're like, no, it has to be, no, no, you don't understand. It has to be affordable. It has to be comfortable. We yeah. got to get you qualified. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. I know it does, but that's, that's why I'm sitting here. Okay. We agree. That's what we're doing. And so, yeah, that's the whole idea is, and I look, I didn't make the financial inventory sheet. I don't know who came up with the OG. That's all I'm using. And if they change it tomorrow, I'm still going to use, I've, because it's what I've, I've, I've done since day one, I'm going to keep on doing, you know, I'm just going to keep on doing that because it's what I came in with. If they put three different words at the top of that sheet, I'd probably be rolling with those words, but they didn't. They put affordable, comfortable, and see if you qualify. So that's what I roll with. Yeah, I think people just need, especially newer agents and, you know, they just need to simplify, keep it simple. You know, I like Dude, it's crazy to me. Like people like ask me like what to wear and all this stuff. I'm like, be comfortable. Do I wear a shoot? Do I wear a shirt and tie? Do, like, do I wear, I, Matt Smith was just on our team call before I got on here. He talked about like back in the day, like wearing like, you know, flip flops and shorts. And then you got the other guys wearing suits. They're both selling the same because they're comfortable. So like I tell everybody, like, do you do whatever you're don't, go in a house and be awkward and uncomfortable. Do whatever makes you, if it's legal, ethical, moral, do what makes you comfortable. And that's, you know, that goes for all elements of this business. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing about being a business owner, guys. We get to do, you know, again, as long as it's above board, we get to, uh, we get to work this business however we want to work it. It's like snowflakes. No two people are going to work it the exact same way. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, man. Analogy. It's it's an honor. It's an honor. Like yeah, I just came up with that, bro. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to remember that one. But just it really, got stolen it really... too. Just so you know, you just came up with it. it just got <laughs> well, stolen. I'm, I'm honored, man. No, it's it, it's true though, right? I mean, no two people are gonna work that. Like, it's crazy to me. It, the 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 foundation, like, let's call it the skeleton, right? The skeleton needs to stay the same. But what kind of meat we put on the bones, you know, that's gonna be different for every single person. But the skeleton yeah. needs to stay the same because that's, that goes back to what we were talking about before people trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, that's where it gets, that's where it gets messy. But if, as long as you're following the same, it doesn't have to be a verbatim script. I don't have people, I don't have new agents coming to homes with me. I don't say, now listen, this is how we say this. This is what you would say to the, like, there's like what seven objections. Okay. So we need to learn some rebuttals pretty easy, but at the end of the day, I'll go back to Jordan Belfort. Cause I'm a big fan. If you haven't read the book way of the wolf, Jordan Belfort, 
read it, and then read it again. It's the it's it going to help you so much. Way of the Wolf, Jordan Belfort. Anyways, I recommend that over the movie. Movie's great, you know, unless you uh depends on your depends on your your whole what you're into. But I wouldn't watch it with like my mom and dad. But anyways, uh, straight line method, right? He talks about that. It's a straight line, and then you have what we referenced earlier, looping. Sometimes you have to pause. You have to loop and handle an objection, and you're back on the line. And this line moves you all the way to the close. And the way he breaks it down in the book is so, so good. Cannot recommend it enough. Way of the Wolf, Jordan Belfort. One of the greatest books you'll read in uh, just sales in general, uh, people skills in general. Um, I'll give you one thing, Wayne. Like, like this is a crazy thing that I do that I learned from that book. He does something called olfactory. It's like olfactory. Uh, um, I'm forgetting what it's called. But so scent is a really powerful thing for us as humans, right? It's nostalgic. You can smell something and be transported to another moment in your life, right? Like my grandparents had mothballs in their house growing up. When I smell mothballs, I'm in my grandparents' home. I mean, I'm, I'm immediately standing in the foyer of their home, right? All right. So he talks about it in the book and he, um, what he, you can do to train your brain. I started doing this and it actually works. This is going to sound so crazy to some of you guys. But I'm telling you, it's a real thing. You can look it up. Jordan Belfort, olfactory training or something. Um, so what he would do is every time he closed a policy or every time he closed a sale, rather, for us, it's a policy, he would get in the car and he would smell the same thing. So some people like Vicks Vapor Rub. I bought this stuff. It's what he recommends in the book. It's called a boom, boom stick. It's literally, it's in my car right now. I wish I'd brought it in. I didn't think I was going to talk about it, but now I feel like I need to. Um, and what you do is like, it's just a scent. It's something like it's, it's, it's called a boom, boom stick. It's like opens up your nasal passages. It smells really good. Anyway, that's a whole thing. Um, but you do that after you close a policy and you do that for like 10, 15, 20 policies. And then what you start doing is before you get out of the car to go into an appointment, you smell it. And your brain is triggered into this like feeling of like success, money in the bank. I, I can't really explain it. But I'm telling you guys, like you want to know like a weird secret of mine. That's one of them is before I go into an appointment, I take a hit of this boom, boom stick smell. And I, again, you could, I guess you could do it with anything. Um, but I take a hit of that and it, it does something in your brain. It literally, yeah, there you go. Wow. So um, look, man, I try it out. It's crazy. It's a weird thing. But yeah, he talks about it in the book. He talks about it on YouTube. It's, it's what you're doing is that same nostalgic feeling you have when you smell something and it triggers something, you're triggering that feeling of success. Like this is the smell that my brain connects to. And it's gotta be a new smell. It's gotta be something, it's gotta be something new that's not connected to something else. But your brain literally is triggered uh, by that smell. It's a weird thing, man. But that's like a, that's a little, uh, that's, a, that, that's a free one. I haven't actually brought that up to anybody outside of maybe my wife. I don't think anybody knows about that, but now anybody on this call, there it is, man. Oh, it makes perfect sense. It's just like everything else. You're creating a system and structure. All and, it is. And training your body to remember everything. It's just muscle. And remember, memory. it's my and it's mindset, right? So, like, yeah. what if it's all plus? What if it is placebo, right? What if it does nothing for me, but I feel like it helps? Then why would I stop? Why would anybody stop that, right? Yeah. So there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with placebo effect if it's if it's putting you know ten grand to, ten grand a, a week in your bank account. I'm I'm okay. Bring on the placebo. I'm all for it.